Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn, and thank you for joining me on the final episode of PSA Hell Month. month we've talked about bullies, drugs, and gasoline air elementals. However, we wouldn't have been able to learn about these various evils if we weren't able to read. And who better to teach kids about reading than the Canadian discount store chain of Zellers? I know absolutely nothing about Zellers beyond that and what I can find on Wikipedia. Subsequently, I couldn't find any information on the whys and hows of this comic's creation, but the inside cover of the comic does invite kids to join the Zeddy's Cub Club and get free milk and cookies! Oh, gee willikers! I get to be taught how to read and get free milk and cookies?! Boy howdy! Let's dig into Batman, A Word to the Wise, and learn more! the third time we've traveled to Canada on this show. And strangely, it only seems to be for comics that are PSA or propaganda oriented. Spider-Man went there to track Electro and his drug-filled hockey pucks, Captain Tax Time taught us how the Canadian government was full of demons, and managed to stop all crime forever and ever, and now it's Batman that's taking us there. Our cover is just kinda average. Batman and two kids in one corner, the Joker and his goons in the other. Though the artwork is a little confusing on the placement of the kids. How big is Batman's cape here if the girl is that close behind him? Also, the placement of the boy's arm is eyebrow raising. The ambiguously gay duo. There are also some weird proportions on the boy. Is it just me, or does he have pipe cleaner legs compared to the average build above the waist? Also, with the way the boy is positioned, I'm not sure how Batman is supposed to be standing. It's like he's leaning himself over a wee bit too much, or maybe the boy is elbowing him in the stomach? We open in Montreal, where Batman is swinging around. Montreal, Quebec, at the height of summer's heat. Hot time, summer in the city, back of my neck getting dirty and gritty. On a night made hotter still by the pyrotechnics of the city's famous fireworks festival. Oh god, my cape is on fire thanks to the fireworks! Why did I clean it with gasoline?! On the streets below, a bunch of kids are watching the fireworks. One kid, Billy, complains about how they can't see the fireworks very well. He spots a fire escape on a nearby building and says they should go climb it to see the view from the rooftop. However, one of his friends spots a sign that says the building is condemned and they should keep out. Hey, what's keeping you guys? Aren't chicken, are you? Cheep, 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 cheep. Kid must be the Flash or something since he gets like three or four stories up before they call up to him. But none of them actually bother to yell at him that the building has been condemned, only that it's not safe. Billy proclaims that it's perfectly safe. And of course, fate shakes its head at the kid and causes the fire escape to collapse. Billy falls over the edge, but Batman swings in and saves him. It's okay, kid. I can't fly either. Unlike that stupid Superman. I'm not jealous or anything! Batman tells the kids he was just passing through and spotted what was going on. 
So what were you thinking of climbing that crumbling death trap? Didn't you see all the signs? Didn't it open up your eyes you saw the sign? No one's gonna drag you up to get into the light where you belong. Sure, I saw the signs. I... I just didn't bother reading them. Those signs are put there for a reason. Do you think no parking signs are put there for fun? Do you, you little punk? Anyway, Batman swings off, and that sequence had nothing to do with anything other than the sign-reading PSA, because we cut to Toronto, where two teenagers are talking to one another. Come on, Joni! The Canadian National Exhibition won't wait forever! Considering that you're already in Canada, isn't calling it the Canadian National Exhibition kind of redundant? The girl, Joni, tells the guy, Joey, that they'll go right after she picks up some history books from the library. But it's the middle of summer! We don't have to go back to school for weeks! Why waste time reading when you could be out having fun? Reading is never fun in any context whatsoever! Okay, Joey, I'll try explaining it to you for the thousandth time. As far as I'm concerned, reading is fun! In books, I've been to places I may never get to see in real life. Imagining other places is much more interesting than actually visiting them. Spent time with fascinating people I may never get to meet. I've written erotic crossover fan fiction about the people I may never get to meet. Oh, Harry Potter, you are Aragon's one true love. Reading has opened up a million new worlds and new vistas for me, Joey. It can do the same for you. Joey says he'll try it sometime, but wants to go to the exhibition. Joey Farrow, you are absolutely hopeless. Oh yeah, wanting to go to an event that's only around for a limited time is such a waste. He should spend all his time reading books, which will still be there when he gets back from the exhibition. Wait. Anyway, the two go inside and the librarian there mentions that they've been taking inventory of a bunch of rare books. She then asks what Joni needs. Just checking in to see if those books I reserved have come in yet, Mrs. LaSalle. But you only ordered them yesterday, dear! I'm sorry, it's just that I'm so anxious to start reading. Give the books a little time to get here. You know how it is, Mrs. LaSalle, when you get yourself completely lost in a new bookend, and I just gotta have my fix, lady! I need my fix! <sighs> I need chapters! CHAPTERS! The librarian gets called away, and Joni accidentally picks up a book that said librarian had put on the table. I do actually like how subtle the motions are. The librarian sets down the book, Joni, while talking to her, sets her books down on top of it, and then Joni picks up the stack. Mind you, I'm wondering why she doesn't have a backpack for her books, but whatever. Meanwhile, Batman is driving between Montreal and Toronto in one of the sillier looking Batmobiles that I've ever seen. Admittedly, it looks nice and roomy, but on the other hand, I can't seem to see any doors to get into the thing. Speaking of silliness, here's what Batman is thinking about. What a truly beautiful drive this is. Beautiful farmhouses and lovely countryside. I'm Batman, and I appreciate the natural beauty of the Canadian landscape. It's no wonder that even a lunatic like the Joker would find his way here eventually. I'm confused by that statement. Does he mean that only crazy people would like it? Or does he think that the Joker is just a big fan of the beauty of nature? He thinks to himself that the Joker's first move was to go to the home of a rare book collector in Newfoundland, specifically looking for a copy of the 1867 edition of The Geography of Canada. Yeah, sounds like a real page-turner. He ransacked the house, found the book, and then left while laughing hysterically at his find. When he struck again, this time in Nova Scotia, the RCMP invited me up here to help them track him down. And just how did the Mounties contact him exactly? Did they create a giant bat signal with a maple leaf cut out of the bat? I guess the Canadian authorities have Batman on speed dial since they contact him on the Batmobile's video phone, Super Friends style. 
Hello, Batman! Yes, the RCMP have new reports of the Joker and his gang being spotted in Toronto! Not surprising. According to the data from my back computer, there's another copy of The Geography of Canada owned by a local Toronto collector. Anyway, the Joker arrives at the library Joni was at earlier. Some of the people in the library recognize the Joker and decide to confront him, but Joker... Uh, mega punches them? I'm not sure exactly what's going on in this panel, but in the next panel, he's tossing away a giant fist? The hell did he just do? Anyway, he demands the book. You, sir, are disrupting the peace and quiet of the library. If you cannot keep it down, I suggest you leave immediately. Librarians do not know fear. Batman arrives and makes short work of the Joker's thugs. However, the Joker then pulls a gun on one of his own goons and threatens to kill him unless Batman lets him leave. He does so, but then Joker wonders what he'll do with Batman. Well, if I just leave you here, you're going to follow me. So I guess there's only one thing left for me to do. <laughs> huh. Th that was surprisingly simple. Kind of funny, actually. Actually, he does shoot, but the gun is filled with pink smoke. Man, pink smoke, now we know how serious this comic is. You didn't really expect me to put an end to our little game of wits, did you? See you in the funny papers, Batman! And naturally, the next day we hear about the Joker's biggest boner. The librarian tells Batman about how Joni must have taken the rare book by accident, and she says that she overheard the two kids talking about going to the exhibition. The Joker, however, has stayed nearby and decides to follow Batman to get the next copy of the book. Meanwhile, back with Joey and Joni... Come on, Joni, tell me the truth! Why do you bother with all these stupid books when you don't even need most of them for school? Kid, you've got to be like 16. Is the concept of reading purely for enjoyment that alien a concept to you? And why the hell are you obsessing over it? Joni continues to preach the message of all the glories of reading when the two arrive at the exhibition. Man, this place is absolutely fantastic! It really makes you proud to be a Canadian! Yes, it is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look at that one booth about skiing. Truly, there is nothing that fills a person with Canadian pride more than skiing. All the diversity, all the information, and all those wonderful pamphlets they're giving away to read! Okay, Joni, now you're starting to get creepy. Reading books? Yeah, I get how exciting a novel can be. Reading pamphlets? Seriously? Batman runs into the two, and of course, they're amazed to see him. However, before Batman can ask about the book, the Joker's goons arrive and seal off the area. Our hero calls out for the Joker to show himself. No need to shout, old friend. I'm not hard of hearing, you know. In another minute, you're gonna be hard of movement, psychopath! Which is why I'm going to spend the next five minutes just standing here and not actually punch you or anything! Seriously, Batman doesn't lift a finger to actually try to stop the Joker! And it's not like we see any of the goons carrying guns or anything. That gun we saw earlier that shot out the pink smoke was it for weaponry! Joni refuses to hand over the geography book, but Joker threatens to use his poison laughing gas on everyone in the building. Though, of course, Batman should know he's bluffing. After all, it's not like he had time to set anything up. The Joker takes the book and rips out a page from it, irritated that what he's looking for isn't in that copy of the book either. He leaves, repeating the threat about killing everyone in the building if Batman tries to follow. That's two strikes, freak. I promise you won't get a third. The next time you try this, I'm going to stand here and do nothing even harder! Batman wonders aloud where the Joker will strike next. Joni has an idea about it and leads our hero back to the library. Well, when the Joker was leaving, he said he was going to saddle up and ride out, which has a definite cowboy western sound to it. As opposed to a cowboy slasher movie sound to it? Also, those are phrases used outside of cowboy slang anyway, so it means nothing. And from what I've read, there are a lot of cowboy western events coming up. In Alberta! I have to admit, it's a possibility. 
Or there's a possibility he might go to Texas. This doesn't mean anything. Batman starts to leave, but the teens insist on coming along. If it wasn't for us, you wouldn't even know where to look for him. No, if it wasn't for Joni, he wouldn't know where to look. You stood there gawking in amazement that she learned all that from reading. Wait a second, why did they have to travel back to the library for this? All they did was look at a map! And it's not the fact that Joni reads books that did this, it's that she knew that there were cowboy-themed events occurring in Alberta at that time of the year. The two of you do know a lot more about Canada than I do. If your parents allow it, you can come along for the ride. What's that, son? You want to ride around with Batman halfway across the country to pursue a murderous supervillain? Yeah, that sounds okay. Thus, the following day, after a quick flight to Alberta by Batplane... Oh, great, they're hanging with Batman for more than one day. Oh yeah, and because time is of the essence, what with these cowboy events occurring in Alberta, they decide to stop at Zeller's. It's terrific that there's always a Zeller's nearby when you need one. I still say we should have stopped at Office Max. Reed Richards once told me that was the place to go for anti-supervillain gear. So why was it so important to make this little stop? So we could pick up some western clothes to wear. I feel like a sheriff in this getup. Yeah, it's a good thing you kids got those clothes, because... They decide to head to a rare bookstore to try to get ahead of the Joker. And minutes later, after the bat computer has triangulated the exact location on a city map grid... You don't know what the word triangulate means, do you, comic? Unfortunately, they arrive too late and the Joker has already taken an old piece of parchment from this copy of the Geography of Canada. The bookstore owner says that the Joker was boasting about making a big announcement to the whole world. What is important is where the Joker plans to make this announcement. And there's only one place large enough to attract the right-sized crowd. At the rodeo! Must be one hell of a rodeo if the entire world is watching it. And the Joker has indeed gone to a rodeo that looks like it has, ooh, maybe a thousand or so people in the audience. He takes the crowd hostage, although how he does, I'm not quite sure. One of the goons appears to have a gun, but I really can't tell because of how undetailed the artwork is. He might be holding a hot dog for all I can see. So what was it that the Joker was looking for this whole time? Thanks to this recently rediscovered land grant, which gives my dear departed ancestors, and by right of inheritance, me, full legal claim, I am now the legal owner of all of North America west of Cape Spear. I must be proclaimed rightful ruler of the whole continent within 24 hours, or I will have the entire population of North America evicted from my private property. Ugh. Okay, Joker, I'm not going to say that this was a dumb plan, since actually it's kind of a clever idea, leagues above the usual plans we see on this show, but there's one big gaping flaw in it. Your national army consists of about six guys. You can make your claim, but it really doesn't matter. We'll recognize it and then immediately declare war on you and conquer everything back in 15 minutes! End of story! O Canada and R-O-C-K in the USA! Batman arrives and the Joker makes his threat about gassing the audience, but since it's an outdoor arena, naturally the threat is pretty toothless, a fact that Batman even points out. He starts fighting the goons, and even the kids decide to endanger themselves, with Joey tripping one while Joni knocks out Dr. Insano here with a heavy book. Batman hogties the Joker, and all is well. While the villains are getting put into a prison van, the Joker continues to proclaim that he's the owner of North America. However, Batman points out he's not quite right there. Well, according to this document, the option on the deed had to be exercised within 125 years of the date of signing. But today is 125 years and one day since the signing. 
To put it simply, Joker, your so-called land grant is completely null and void! You're every bit the detective that your followers on the internet believe. Thanks for all your help, kids! What help? They read a map, put on cowboy hats, and took out two goons that you could have dealt with without them! And so our comic ends with Joey stating that he sure learned a lesson about reading, and he's going to start reading a lot more. Hopefully he'll be reading something a lot better than this, because this comic sucks. I will say, however, that it's enjoyably goofy. Joni and Joey are complete opposites, one disbelieving of any reading having any kind of merit, while the other is so obsessed with reading that she finds informational pamphlets to be the most awesome thing ever. The Joker's plan is insane, but then again, what do you expect from the crazy guy? It's always nice to see the Joker like this. Psychotic, yes, but not to some extremes that writers make him out to be, where he'll be downright sadistic. He should be scary, yeah, but also funny and playful. And does someone want to tell me the point of the first few pages beyond padding? I especially love how reading actually contributes nothing to solving the situation. The only information it purportedly contributes is that certain phrases are associated with cowboys. Which you'd probably pick up from a movie, not books. <laughs> You got a magic gun. Yeah, I, I do, but... I'll be taking that. Okay, okay. No need to worry. Here it is. Hey, you have a magic gun? Where'd you purchase that? There's explosions and sparks, but nothing's actually blown up. What the hell is this dimension made out of? Give it up! You can't hope to stop me! I'm just gonna keep coming at you! Keep on attacking, and bring hell down on you! Eventually your defense will be weakened! Your reserves will be gone! There is no hope for you! And I'll take your weapon, and leave you to suffer this- Nimoy, unleash the so new Cybermat on him. this! I am so tired of assholes coming into my home and doing this! You think I'm afraid of you? You think I care about your backstory? I have fought conquerors, robots, and monsters, and I have been victorious every time! There is nothing that can stop me now! Nothing! What did I do? And now, 
A public service announcement from Snowflame! Did you know that over 27 million people go hungry every second? Snowflame was told that, and Snowflame has the answer. This. This is why the people go hungry. It's so tiny. Snowflame would be hungry too. How are you so small? Snowflame is ashamed. Snowflame's gonna take care of this problem right now. by two heaping teaspoons of Snowflame! Snowflame Dawn! This has been a public service announcement from Snowflame! <laughs>